What's going on guys? Josh here. I am back. I got a video for you and this is a new series and it's something that I've wanted to start for a while and I just wasn't quite sure how to do it, but now I know and I'm going to start it. Now, before we get into this one, I'm going to let you know that I'm working through a little bit of a head cold. So uh, there may be some breaks and pauses and stuff where I got a cough, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through this and I'm going to start looking at your photos and figuring out tips and tricks on helping you become a better photographer. So what I've done is I've had uh, other photography companies, other photographers send me either a personal gallery of like a few of their favorite photos or like a full wedding gallery. And that's what we're working on today. Uh, my friend Mary over at Wild and Free Photography sent me her gallery from one of her most recent weddings. And I'm going to kind of just quickly go through it I'm not going to like pick apart every single photo because a lot of it doesn't need to be picked apart. Now I have went through and kind of pre-selected a couple to show you how I'd edit them. But for the most part, we're just going to kind of get down to the nitty gritty and I'm going to talk to you overall about how I feel your photos look and what I personally feel could be better, could be uh, worse, what you've done good. This is not just going to be a me picking apart your photos the whole time. It's going to be kind of an overall what I think about it. Now, remember, these are just my opinions. Uh, photography is super subjective. It all depends on what you want your photo to look like. Uh, your style is your style. So don't take anything that I say too serious, I guess you could say. I don't want to offend anybody just because my style of photography is different than yours. So basically what I'm doing in these is I am going to kind of make them look Joshy, I guess you could say. So that's kind of what we're going to do is we're going to get into it and we're going to kind of pick apart the photos or galleries or whatever you want. Uh, if you want to send me your uh, photos or your gallery, check out the link in the description down below uh, is my email and that's how you can send it to me. So let's get into this. Also, I'm going to leave uh, the photographer's information as well down in the description. Go give them a like on their social media. It takes a lot of balls to send your stuff in and say, hey, can you kind of pick my stuff apart? So thank you. Uh, I have like seven of these already lined up. So there should be one a week coming out for the next like seven weeks or so. Uh, if you want to send yours in, hit that description down below and send it over. Uh, yeah, let's get into it right now. So let's let's uh, let's dive into this. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to pick apart Natasha and Perry's wedding. Now. I've already went through it and I kind of overall have a feeling that I want to talk about in this gallery, uh, technically two things, uh, but we're going to, I'm going to kind of just scroll through, look at some of the photos and kind of tell you what I would change about them, uh, what I'd make better, what I would leave, uh, because there are a lot of really great photos in here. Now, with that being said, let's talk about a lot of photos. This gallery, I don't know how many for sure, but I would guess this gallery has probably close to like 700 photos in it. That's a really high amount of photos for what I feel was probably about six hours of shooting. Now, what I usually say is with my photography, you're going to get about 30 photos per hour. Uh, what that means is like for a 10 hour wedding, you're getting about 300 photos. Uh, this, uh, it, it could sway a little bit more. Sometimes I give a little bit more lately. I've been giving more around like 500 to 600 photos. But what I say is you're going to get about 10 uh, sorry, 30 really good photos, the bangers per hour of photography that I'm with you. So remember that. Now, once again, that's just my opinion. You can give them all your photos if you want, but that is just something that I've found that if you can get 30 banger photos in one hour, you're doing a great, great job. Uh, because uh, anybody that shoots weddings knows a lot of it is just kind of pray and spray. Uh, the further along you get into your photography career, the more that changes a little bit. But for the most part, it's pray and spray. Let's go ahead and open this gallery. And I know this is just a deliverable. It's just something that you're sending to your couples to uh, get them their photos to download. But I still personally like to put this in album form, in story form. So when I go right here, I don't see what I'm looking at. Uh, my first few photos are usually some type of descriptive uh, photos of what's going on that day. So a lay flat of 
the uh, you know uh, flowers and jewelry and uh, uh, invitations, stuff like that. Maybe a couple setting location photos. And I am going to talk about a location photo in here. Uh, but that is one thing that I usually try to think about is even when they're going to this, they're still going to want to see that story, even though it's just to download, like to be able to read through this story as it happened is going to help them relive the moments. So that's something to kind of think about. So, okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to get into this and uh, these photos are okay. I understand what they are. They're kind of the, the getting ready stuff. This photo right here on the top left, and I'm sorry if I'm going to block any of these. I'm going to try to remember that I'm down here in this corner looking up at all of this stuff. Um, this photo doesn't make any sense to me. I don't feel like it needs to be in this gallery. It's not telling anything. Now, if you were to crop more into just her brooch and her hair, that would make more sense to me. Um, other than that, it just it kind of looks like a mistake, to be honest. So um, I would probably honestly leave that one out of there. Let me move this. It's going to keep making crazy things go on. Uh, I would probably leave that out of there. It's not really needed to be in there. All of these are absolutely perfect as far as capturing what's going on, the getting ready. This is exactly what I would photograph if I was photographing the getting photographing the getting ready stuff. Now, I have a tendency to shoot a little lower and shoot up more hero style. So like this photo, I feel like it's almost shooting down on them. Um, this one, you're shooting down on them. I would have got down to their level and shot this. I think with shooting straight on, it would have looked a lot better. This photo right here, this, this is an absolutely great way to start that, uh, this gallery, this, this, uh, portfolio that you're sending to them, the, the deliverables. Uh, I feel like this should have been the first photo that I saw just kind of because it kind of says, okay, well, we're at a wedding. This is what's going on. Uh, black and whites, they look okay. I personally feel like this is probably the best photo of the four that you have here. One, two, three, four. Great. This is a great photo. I probably also would have did this in black and white with a little bit of sepia to it. So just a little bit of tan to this photo. I think it would have looked really good. Uh, I also probably would have made this a little flatter. Uh, and if you don't know what I'm talking about, I do have a... Um, uh, uh, YouTube video. Sorry, I'm, I'm kind of thinking uh, too fast. Uh, a YouTube video where I explain what I'm talking about when I say the matte look or the flat look. So check that out. So these are great. All of these are great. I would not change anything. This is probably, this honestly looks like something I would do. Um, this is another great detail shot. Now, I don't feel like this is a great detail shot for the beginning of the uh, album. Uh, because it doesn't really, it, it doesn't play into the wedding. I mean, I understand that it's the silverware from the wedding, but it doesn't play into the wedding. Uh, this is an amazing shot. This is probably something that they would absolutely want in their album if they were going to get a print. This is another banger. Really like it. Uh, I would like to see it in color. Here it is in color. Great photo. I love it. It's, it's a great detail shot of what's going on that day. Uh, this is the one that I wanted to talk about right here. So this is your venue that uh, where the wedding is happening. And this is the only shot of the venue. The, the venue is a backyard wedding. Uh, this is the only shot of the entire venue uh, by itself. And I feel like this photo doesn't convey what's going on at the wedding. Uh, I'm really distracted by the fence. Uh, I'm distracted by the uh, the sewage tank things here, and I'm really distracted about the semis back here. Uh, what I would do is I would not, I would shoot from like over here, shoot low, and use like a wide angle lens and try to get all of this in, because what you're going to do is you're going to use the tent to block this background. You're not going to have the fence in. Uh, you're not going to have this whole sewage system thing here. Uh, they did a great job like landscaping and covering it up, but I notice it right away only because and the reason that I do notice it is because your leading lines are right here. These two posts, this lead you up to the tent. And before you can get to the tent with your eyes, you see all of this. It also looks like it might have been raining. That may, maybe you're shooting under an awning or something like that. So I kind of understand what's going on, but this is the only shot of the venue. And I feel like you could have shot more angles. Uh, there's no shots that I saw of the like the arbor the arch there are shots during the ceremony but i don't see this is 
I'm missing the creativity in that photo, if that makes sense. These are great. These, both of these, love them. Love this. Slightly out of focus. Looks like it focused on the hair uh, and not so much here. So I would have went manual focus with this one. Uh, maybe even step back and uh, cropped in later. A little hot over here as far as exposure. A little hot in the shoulder. This is a great shot. Love this one. Let's get on past this a little bit. Uh, getting ready stuff. It all looks good. Uh, gentlemen getting ready. Flowers. This is another detail shot I probably would have put at the beginning. Great photo. Uh, let's get on down. I'm guessing dad getting ready. Groomsman groom. So this is bride putting grooms. So they did do a first look, I'm assuming. Um, I don't see like an official like first look. Um, so I don't know if they did like an official first look. I would have definitely made them do one, even if they didn't want to, to be honest. Um, this kind of looks like a first look, but at the same time, it's just getting the flower on. Uh, because he hasn't seen a bride in, uh, in her outfit yet. He hasn't seen Natasha in her outfit, so he needs to see this, this, this wedding dress. More getting ready stuff. It all looks good. I love this. The armpit shot. I have so many of those. Now, I usually don't leave them in the... I understand this isn't a public gallery, but uh, yeah, I usually take them out of there and put them in their USB drive. So now we're getting into the groomsman photos. This is something that I wanted to talk about here. This is like a, a pretty big, um, I guess, no-no in my book. Um, this one looks okay. What I always try to do is I always try to have the groomsman face your groom. So with this being your groom here in the center, I would take these three gentlemen and turn turn them a quarter towards him. These two would turn a quarter that way towards them. That way they are all what I call V up. So if you look at it, uh, they're going to make a V with their bodies and it's going to kind of be like shoulder and shoulder and the back shoulders are going to kind of touch each other. Now with this one, I would keep groom. I would keep, uh, what's his name, Perry in the center. And I would turn the groomsman to kind of V up minus the center of it, which wouldn't be a V. All right, let's get back into it. I had a visitor, so I had to kind of pause there for a second. Let me get right back into it. Let's see where we're at here. Uh, we are at the wedding party photo. So like I said, I would totally have them uh, V up towards our groom here. Now, this is the one that I really wanted to talk about. When you have shoulders interlacing like this see what it does to the coat it just makes it look awkward uh, it wrinkles in weird spots like here towards the center uh, it bunches up it causes wrinkles it's just not a very flattering photo i always 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 try to stay away from this shot uh, also you got to watch for floating hands when people do this uh, this hand is coming out of nowhere um, these fingers are just randomly floating. So when you let people, there's another set of fingers right here. There's a hand, another set of fingers, I think right there. It looks like it's slightly out of focus. Um, that's a problem. You, you don't want floating fingers. You don't want floating hands and you don't want bunched up shirts. So no matter how much your, and it's typically the groom, how much your groom wants to put their arms around people, parents, grandparents, stuff like that, let him do it. And then tell them, okay, let's get into a photo pose here. Let's get into something a little more uh, straightforward. And just explain it to them. Just be like, uh, the way that you're standing right now makes, you, makes your, your suit look weird. You know, if, if you're honest with them and make a joke out of it, they're usually like, oh, okay. Uh, I had a groom a couple weddings ago that literally every time someone got up to him, his arms went around him. And by the end of it, I was like, bro, what are you doing? You're killing me. Like, Get out of that pose. And he'd be like, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And, and it kind of became a joke. By the end of the, the wedding party photos, it became a joke. Or the the formal photos, it became a joke that, like, like, dude, come on. And he, he'd start laughing. It, it becomes kind of a joke. So you can make it fun. You don't have to just be a dick about it. You can, you can make it fun. But just let them know that it makes their outfit look weird. And you don't want weird. Okay, so let's go on down. Uh, these are all these are all fine. I would v up just a little bit more 
So where I'd have their shoulders kind of turned just a little bit towards each other. These are all great. Uh, bring these two together. They look like they uh, don't want to actually be next to each other. This is good. Just V them up a little bit. If you would turn their bodies just a little bit, fix homeboy's tie right here. Uh, if you bring them a V them up just a little bit, it just make it that much better of a photo because you're going to kind of see more of a profile shot instead of just a straight on. Okay. So these photos right here, I love. All of, all of these truck photos, I absolutely love. I did pull one of them out. I pulled... Uh, this one right here out and we're gonna I'm gonna show you kind of how I would edit this photo and what I would do to it uh, Let me see. Let me pull it up here. Okay, so now I just I only have a JPEG So it may kind of mangle the photo when we're all done with it But what I would do to this one I can see some Porta Johns back here So what I would do is I'm actually gonna take this over into Photoshop here And the reason that I want to do something to this photo is because it's a great photo and it would be even better for um, doing some some artsy fartsy stuff to it. So once this opens up, I will get into that. All right, so we are here in Photoshop now. I'm just going to do a couple things to it. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this uh, the clone stamp tool. I'm going to come back here. Like I said, this is a JPEG, so I don't know how much I'm going to be able to do to it. What is that? Something's going on right here. Some weird artifacting. I don't know what's going on there. Okay, let's see if we can get rid of this turlet back here. Bring our brush up a little bit. All right, let's, uh, let's grab some trees. Kind of just start hiding these boys back here. Now what we're going to do is we're going to soften our brush just a little bit. And typically I'll make a new layer for this. But for example, and speed purposes, I just want to kind of do it. Okay, we're going to grab the grass here. Bring this in. And grab some more bushes. Grab a little bit different of trees. Just for some difference here. There we go. We got rid of them. Uh, there's also a weird red something or another back here. Let's get rid of him too. There we go. Okay, so there's really nothing else I would change as far as the way the photo looks itself. Maybe a little bit of a crop, but we'll do that back in Lightroom. So I'm going to hit Command S. Save this. Bring this back over into Lightroom. There we go. So there... Um, with the porta johns and without the porta potties, it looks good. It looks way better. Uh, also, what I'm going to do, I'm going to crop this just a smidge here. I'm going to bring a little bit of this, and the reason that I'm cropping it is because the back half is cropped. So I want to make sure it's level, it's even. So you got just as much person to to edge. In person to edge now it's a little off but let me just fix it there we go okay so now we're working person to edge what i would have done is i would have made sure i got this bumper in here it's not going to make that big of a difference uh, okay so now let's go down here let's create this flat look that i'm talking about what i'm going to do is i'm going to do tone curve i'm going to hit one and i'm going to hit two and i'm going to hit three these are your lows, this is your low line, this is your mid line, and this is your high line. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring this down just a little bit. And I'm going to bring this, take this dot that was already there, and I'm going to start bringing it up. And what that's going to do is it's going to create a flat looking photo. That's what I want. Let's bring our shadows up just a little bit. Let's see if we can do our highlights. I don't think we're going to be able to do it too much because it's a JPEG. We might be able to bring it, there we go. So... Already looking like a better photo right here. No offense to your photo again. Well, let's bring these greens a little bit more green. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my HSL slash color. Make sure color is highlighted. Hit the greens. Bring those greens over here. Now you could go like super green if you wanted. I don't want to. I want to go all the way over here, but then I'm going to take the saturation down a little bit. So then my greens are really green, but they're not like 
weird, creepy, creamy green. Uh, yellows, I'm going to bring those green too. Uh, actually, I kind of like the orange and then bring it down. All right, so now what I want to do is this is where I'm going to start adding my artistic look to it. So I'm going to open up my color grading, which is new on the light, new Lightroom, new Ur, I should say. And th what it is is it's three dots. This is your shadows, these are your midtones, and these are your highlights. Now, to create that artistic, that cinematic uh, teal and orange look, what you want to do is you want to bring your midtones up to the orange side. Then you're going to take your shadows and bring those towards the teal side. And then take your highlights and bring them towards the teal side. Now, from there, you can kind of tweak them. Like, if you want to bring it back towards more towards orange, you can. Um, I just kind of go just slightly off there. So, that is um, probably what i do to this photo. I really wish there was a lot more depth of field in it. Um, maybe bring the contrast a little bit. There we go. Let's take that contrast. And then what we can do is we can bring up our highlights a little bit more. So bring those blacks up. So there is, um, this is your photo, which is weird. It doesn't have a watermark on it. Does, does Pixie Set allow you to download non-watermarked versions, even though they're watermarked online? Is that a thing? I didn't know that. I use Pixie Set, and I didn't even know that. Huh. Uh, so yeah, there's there's the uh, the one that I downloaded from your gallery, and here's with just a slight tweak on what it would look like. Now, uh, as you can see, I didn't do too much to it, other than kind of give it some style, give it a little bit of pizzazz, uh, give it a little bit of Josh Russell look to it. I mean, I could even go in and let's bring the, you know, even if you wanted to make it a little bit more on the browner tones here. And go down here and bring your highlights over towards the orange side. You know, so there, there's a lot more artistic shot that is really going to give you way more pop, way more art to the photo. And something that now probably could be a two-page spread on an album uh, with the guys. Uh, I also probably would have put my groom in the center. Uh, just kind of that's how it goes. Uh, that's how it, it feels and how it looks. But artistic opinion. Okay, let's get back to the gallery now. Whoops. Whoopsie doodle. All right. So that's what I would have did to that one. Uh, let's keep going. Uh, just more kind of just hanging out photos. Okay, so here starts the ceremony. I'm guessing she's got the iPad that has either the music or... Um, or uh, maybe she has the vowels, something like that on it uh, coming down. Okay, so now we're getting back into the, the uh, a little bit more family formal photos. So what I want to do is I pulled this one out because I also want to show you how just taking a couple distractions out could make this a much better photo. Um, so where is that in my gallery here? Okay. So we're going to take this. I, like I said, I always upload to Lightroom, but we're going to take this over into Photoshop. And I'm going to show you how getting rid of some of this background stuff would really make this photo go from a 7 to an 8, maybe. It's not a bad photo. It's a great family photo, uh, family portrait. Uh, but these distractions, they kill me. So I'm going to create a new layer here. Uh, first, what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my lasso tool. Because this one's going to be super simple to do. Uh, we're going to lasso this little stump trunk out of here edit content aware fill we're gonna have to fix this shadow as well but just like that deselect and then we're gonna grab our clone stamp tool uh we'll flatten that layer yeah 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 whoops there we go grab that color in this grass a little bit And we're going to try that same thing, that clone stamp. Oops. We're going to try that same clone stamp idea over here, but I don't know if it's going to work. Let's 
So, or sorry, the content or fill, I mean. Let's see if we can do it. Come on, look at that. Uh, let's just delete this area. We don't want to copy in that. Oops. Let's try that. Nice. Okay, so because of the way we copied that, it's getting some of this grass in the foreground here. So what we're going to have to do before we do anything with it, before we let, uh, uh, merge it down, we're going to have to add a little bit of blur to it uh, just because of depth of field and stuff like that. So we want it to, look, we want it to match the rest. So... Now, let me see if there's another better way than that. Isn't there a blur? Um, lens blur? Is that what it is? Surface blur. Let me see if lens blur is what I want. Um, yeah, that might be it. There we go. But then what we're going to do is we're going to take it and... Add a mask to it. And yeah. so, nope, that's not the right way we want to do it. I was right the first time. Blur, blur, Gaussian blur. And then just a, just a smidgy smidge. There we go. Okay, so now we got to touch up this edge here. And we're just going to grab our clone stamp, uh, lo lower that level, or merge that level, I should say. We're just going to kind of get in here nice and close to the arm, without touching the arm. Well, touch the arm there. Okay, so we're going to have to get even smaller here. Go in. Too small. Get as close to the arm as you can. Getting some of that white out of there. So as you can see, we're getting ready to get rid of a couple of those distractions. Now I could probably go in and blur this area just a little bit more. Um, but you got rid of that. Uh, you could probably get rid of these shadows as well. Uh, because the shadows are semi-distracting. They don't need to be getting, gotten rid of though. But just by doing that, you're uh, <clears throat> you're making more of the focus on the people and not so much what's going on in the background, if that makes sense to you. So then what you could do from there, because you did that, you can crop this down a little bit and make it more just about them. Bam. There you go. Now you got a better, better family formal photo, family portrait. Uh, yeah, so that's, that's kind of what I would do for the distractions in the background. Um, the overall feeling of this, um, this wedding, if I could tell you anything, Mary, and anybody else is watching, depth of field, uh, you need, you need a, a, a wider aperture lens. I can tell in a lot of this stuff that you're shooting pretty wide open and it's still like, probably like an F4, F4 three, five, maybe, uh, but you're probably shooting in like, um, like a, yeah, these look like they're like, a, like an eight or like even maybe higher 16 F 16, something like that, because there's a lot of background in focus in these photos. And, and that's something you got to watch out for is you don't want a lot of background in focus. Um, because when you have a lot of background in focus, this is what happens. Like I see the road back here. I see the trees like there's there's no separation of your your people from the background. Uh, so and this tree here is is very, very distracting for me. Um, these branches are very distracting. Uh, let me pull this one up. These branches right here are very distracting. Now, if you were shooting it like an F18 or an F14, like I always do, uh, you wouldn't have that problem. They, they wouldn't be as in focus. Just something to think about. Get yourself, even if it's a 50 millimeter 
or um, I think the 50 millimeter 1.8s are pretty uh, pretty affordable right now. I mean, uh, don't get me wrong. I think they're like five or six hundred bucks. But that if you're charging the right amount for what you should be for your weddings, that's an investment that you should be making in. So uh, as long as you're not bottom feeding yourself and, and undercharging. Uh, there was another photo here that I pulled out of here because I wanted to talk about. Where are you? Whale? No, I can't find it. Is it this one? Nope. Is it this group here? Okay. So it's this photo right here, which I'm going to work on that photo. These are all fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. I love every one of these. Um, I, I just think I think they look great. So, yeah, I, I, these are great. I love these photos. Um, this one right here. So what I wanted to talk about is the fact that this lady right here on the right, on her left, is really dark in this shadow here. Uh, and then she's kind of overexposed. So let's talk about how we can fix that. What you can do is there's a couple different ways to do this. Uh, one, you can first pull your shadows up and see what that does to your photo and then bring your highlights down. Once again, I, I'm working on the JPEG, so it might not do exactly what I want it to. Um, so you can see that kind of fixed it. But what you can do uh, is what you can actually use your brush in Lightroom. Let's brush this lady's face in right here. It's kind of like that. That's all you really need to do. And then take your shadows and start pulling them up. And what that's going to do is it's going to lighten her up. But all it's going to lighten up is the area that you brush. Now, if you want to add another one, just go here, go brush. And then we're going to make this one a little smaller. We're going to paint on the side of our lady's face here, our bride. And we're going to bring the highlights down on that one. Now, if I had a raw, it would be much better. It's kind of muddying up the photo, but... You can just see right from there that, like, all I did was just kind of brighten it up. And you can see both of their faces a lot better. It's still, we're, we're uh, dealing with this distracting background. But that's, uh, that's something we've already talked about. Okay, back to the gallery. I'm going to kind of just kind of buzz through this. I want to try to get through these here. Um like I said, great photos overall. They look great. They're great wedding party photos or, or wedding event photos. The only thing that I would change is the depth of field. I think if you're shooting with a, a wider depth of field, like a one eight or a one two, or sorry, one four or a one two, um, you'd have a lot more separation from this background. It would make them stand out a little bit better, and it would just make it look a little bit more professional. Other than that, these photos are, are fantastic. This is a great wedding, like, uh, candid wedding photography photos. Um, there's really nothing more that I would kind of say about them other than this arbor is, this would drive me insane. This would drive my OCD insane. Because, like, if you look at your horizon, which your horizon is level on a lot of your photos, and I want to thank you for that. I cannot stand Dutch angle photos where the horizon is sideways. It just doesn't have a time and place anywhere. Um, level horizons. But this is something else. Um, great. Great photos. Great. They look good. Like I said, these are all candid photography photos. They're not, not a lot of posed stuff. Uh, there is some posed things here. Um, I like this photo. This is good. So I did pull one out that I want to edit and kind of see what I can do to. Uh, it'd be this one right here. And I'm going to get into it. This is going to be the last one I do. Other than that, like I said, the, the, the gallery is great. Um, there is there are some things that I would fix, and I hope you go back and look at them. Uh, first thing I'm going to do on this one is level horizon. I would hope you'd go back and look at them. And kind of take that into consideration. Like I said, I'm not trying to like pick apart your photos. I'm not trying to say you suck because you absolutely don't. Uh, I can tell that you're on the newer spectrum. And I think you told me this might have been one of your first few weddings. But keep going. Definitely. It'll come with time and it'll come with education. So I highly suggest getting into uh, a, online classes, one-on-one -on -one sessions with me maybe. Uh, but uh, yeah, there's, there's, a, there's, there's work to be done, but there's also a lot of work that's already been taken care of. So let's edit this photo here. 
bring the vibrance up a little bit. Let's also uh, bring the shadows up. Let's bring the blacks up. Let's take the highlights and the whites down. Let's bring the contrast up. Let's bring the exposure up. See what we can do with this. No, that ain't going to do what I want it to. All right, so we're there. Uh, same way we did the other one. Let's take this, yeah. bring it here, bring the saturation down, bring this this way, bring the saturation down. Let's bring that exposure up a little bit more. We're going to make this one almost like light and airy. Um, I would also probably kind of fill in this area with some more of these trees, but I'm not going to go into that right now. Um... Yeah. We could probably bring the exposure on these others up. There we go. Let's bring the exposure up on those. Uh, yep. Playing with the curves here. Or, sorry, not the curves. The uh, color grading. Look at that. Just a few simple clicks. Now, I'm, like I said, JPEG, working with what I got. Uh, but, I mean, it's a nice little artistic photo right there that would look good with the rest of the gallery. I do have preset packs that have a lot of very similar looks to it, um, like this. Uh, let me see if I can. This is almost like uh, just randomly heard the background music, and it almost sounds like Stranger Things here. Let's see if we can get rid of this yellow here. Take these over to the blue side. And then go to the green side. There we go. There we go. Now we're working with a better photo. Uh, we could probably even crop this down a little bit, and that would help with not needing to get rid of much, as much of the background here. Bam! Look at that. Woo! That's what I'm talking about right there. So there you have it. We went through this gallery for wild and free photography. Uh, thank you so much, Mary, for sending me your gallery. I hope this helped you. I know this is kind of a long video. I hope you sit down and you watch it. I have many more of these coming. Uh, overall, like I said, Mary, uh, think about getting a better lens, something that's a little sh deeper in the depth of field. Maybe work on your compositions a little bit more. Uh, lead, remember your leading lines, stuff like that. And... What I also try to tell everybody is make sure every one of your photos has an intention. Uh, that's that's a, a very important part of photography is making sure that every one of your photos is taken for a reason and not just kind of pray and spring. Think about every shot you take and where would it line up in an album where would it line up if you were uh, putting together like a physical photo album? Like if you had to add every single one of your photos to a photo album, where would it fit? And if it doesn't fit in the story, don't take it uh, or don't include it. I should say you can take it, but don't include it unless it fits somewhere in a story. I want to thank you guys for watching. Those of you that stuck around and watched this, I appreciate it. I, Like I said, I have a lot of these coming out over the next few weeks. If you want your gallery, your photos critiqued uh, and given a little bit of constructive criticism, hit the description down below and send them to the email. Uh, make sure they are in a gallery. Include your name and also include your social media links so I can get those out there because I want to make sure you guys are promoted too for allowing me to do this. So I will talk to you guys later. Uh, I want to thank you again. I want to thank Mary Wild and Free Photography uh, for allowing me to do this. I really appreciate it. And thank you for letting me. Uh, thank you for being my first guinea pig. Talk to you guys later. Peace out.